So, Congressman, let me ask you, there, there's the deal itself, and I know that you are waiting to see the actual text of the, of the legislation. There's also the process by which this happens. The Washington Post editorial board writes, quote, what should not happen now is for Americans to breathe a sigh of relief and move on. Yes, a last-minute compromise occurred, but a dangerous precedent has been set. House Republicans have now used the debt limit twice to create a hostage-like situation that brings the nation close to an unthinkable default. Expect that a future Republican Congress would be willing to go over the cliff to extract more. What do you make of how House Republicans, how they have weaponized this process, not once but twice, knowing that those same Republicans voted to raise the debt three times under the Trump administration? Listen, Alicia, you and I both know that this is the party of hypocrisy. I mean, even when we think about uh, how much they say they love law and order, we know that the people that are consistently under indictment tend to be the Republicans right now, right? It's like, so it, it's a continual um, house of hypocrisy. And it's really unfortunate because, yeah, we are at the brink and the average American doesn't understand. They say, well, what's so bad about balancing the budget? The reality is that we are not at the budget process. The reality is that they have not laid out a budget. The reality is that we are trying to pay a credit card bill off for which 25 percent of this debt was accrued under Trump. The reality is that they are trying to undo legislation that was duly passed in a Democratic majority where they're saying, you know what, all that money that was set aside so that IRS can go after the big tax cheats, the ones that are most likely funding the Republican campaigns, we don't want them to be able to do that enforcement. We don't want them to be able to go after mm -hmm. those monies. And so instead of just raising the debt limit, the debt ceiling, they've decided this is our opportunity to really deal with the budget, even though we're not putting forward a budget. And if you're going to say that, hey, this is about being fiscally responsible, well, tell me how much money we're going to save. Tell me that. I can tell you that the president's budget was going to save $3 trillion. I can tell you that in the first two years of this presidency, the president has saved almost $2 trillion. And he did it without harming those that need the government the most. Yeah, I mean, uh, I see it as as two prongs here, right, Congressman, which is you have what we're talking about now. It is very likely you, you could be voting as soon as Wednesday. If it goes through, Senate could be voting as soon as Friday. But there's what you're saying, which is how we have arrived at this moment and how we continually arrive at this moment. President Biden, in the last hour from the Roosevelt Room, talking to the American people, he had this to say about reforming the process. Take a listen. I think it would cause more controversy getting rid of the debt limit, although I do, I am exploring the idea that we would, uh, at a later date, a year or two from now, decide whether or not the 14th Amendment, how that actually would impact on whether or not you need to do the debt limit every year. But that's another day. All right. So not talking about 14th Amendment for the purposes of this, of this specific negotiation, but talking about taking the next year to consider what a workaround might look like. Uh, how does that change the work that you do and what it is that Congress is able to deliver for their constituents? Yeah, you know, Alicia, what most people don't understand is that this really should not be a debate. Um, the Republicans say, oh, the Democrats did it as well. To be clear, the Democrats just wanted to push through legislation that actually was going to help Republican constituents. Um, they basically decided, hey, this is an opportunity to get funding, say, for some flooding that happened in the state of Texas, which is Republican controlled. They did it for the purpose of good. Historically, what we consistently see is that Democrats are pushing forward for the good of this country. But unfortunately, the Republicans saw this as an opportunity for them to do something that they most likely would not be able to do. At the end of the day, they absolutely have control of the House. And so once we got to the budget, then we could have had the proper fight. But they knew that half of this stuff wouldn't even make it through their own caucus. Like, they wouldn't be able to do it because then it's out front. It's out front 
that we've decided that the only increase in this budget is going to be for defense. And at the end of the day, a budget is a moral contract. It tells you where one's priorities lie. And so with it happening in this process, it's very convoluted and they sell it in a different way instead of just being honest. And that's one of the things we just can't get out of the Republican Party. Now, there are going to be those that say, hey, the 14th Amendment should have been used because you know what? This legislation has already been passed. It's already been authorized by the Congress. This is just a matter of paying these bills. That's all it is. And so why we are debating this is really uh, one of those head-scratching moments for us. I have less than a minute left, but i got to ask you, Congresswoman, as you look over the other side of the aisle, do you think that uh, Kevin McCarthy is going to be able to deliver the votes from his caucus for this? No, he's going to need Democrats. We've already heard from the likes of Matt Gates that basically, uh, you know, it almost didn't seem like it mattered what type of deal was struck. He wasn't going to vote for it. I think the difference is he may not vote for it, but he also would not necessarily uh, do a motion to vacate the chair. And seemingly that's all McCarthy was trying to avoid is a motion to vacate the chair. But he is not going to be able to pull his entire caucus in to vote for this. So he's going to need Democrats. So it'll be interesting to see uh, who all decides to vote for this, because I am waiting on the text to make a determination as to whether or not this will do more good or bad for my district.